Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. On behalf of Alice and myself, we just want to greet you in the wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And say that we're so glad that you can join us for this time in the Word. Yes. As we continue on in our look at the, the statement of Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount, Judge not, lest you be judged, in Matthew 7, 1. And we're looking at that whole topic of, of judgment. Uh, it, it's truly important, particularly in these perilous last days, when Jesus warned, when Paul warned, when Peter warned, when John warned about how there would be so many false prophets, how there would be false teachers and false apostles, how there would be a time when many would be led astray by these false teachings. And today, so many false teachers, false prophets, false whatever, are hiding behind this verse and other verses like, Touch not my anointed, and we need to look at this and make sure that we have a clear understanding of what Jesus is saying. So that's where we're going today. And this is the second part of our, our look at this. If you weren't here for the first part, which is um, last week's study, mm -hmm. please go back and, and take time to, to watch it. Because you need that as a, as a prelude, a preamble uh, to what we're foundation. doing here. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to start, we're going to read at Matthew 7. But before we do, I'm going to ask Alice if you'll ask God's blessing on our time together today. Yes, I will. Hallelujah. Father, we do. We come before you with praise. We come before you with thanksgiving yes, Lord. for all that you're doing. And we thank you especially for this word, Lord, and this time that we have to share what you want others to hear. So, Father, we just pray that those hearts will be open to hear and to receive and to discern we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for who you are, and we love you. Amen. Amen. So I want to kind of pick up where we did leave off in our, in our last study. Talking about, you, you, you'll you see clearly, and I pray that God will open the eyes of our hearts to see the truth of his word. That it's an oversimplification to just say, well, you can't judge that person mm -hmm. because He's God's anointed, he's a prophet, he's a teacher, he's a pastor, he's a whatever. Um, that's not what Jesus means here. No. And mm -hmm. to, to clarify a point, I think I ended on this last week, that if you were to look in his letters, the letters of Jesus Christ to the churches in the book of Revelation, in right. the second chapter, I want to I want to read these again. Jesus wrote to the church at Ephesus through the Apostle John, through the angel, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, he commended them, he commends this church, saying, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. Revelation 2.2. 2. So he is saying that they did the right thing by putting these yes. apostles to the test. Does that mean judging them? Yes. Well, it does. <laughs> it means examining them. But this is what we're gonna what we need to look at, all right? Because the the opposite of that is what he spoke to the church at Thyatira, also in that second chapter of the book of Revelation. He said, But I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Mm -hmm. And she teaches and leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Revelation 2.20. Yeah. So here in his letters to those last day churches or the churches of his time, he's saying the one church did well because they put to the test. Right. They judged. Yes. They, it's not just a matter of discernment. It's a matter of testing. It's a matter of examining. And we talked about this with Paul at Berea, right? Yes. So what they're doing, and God says, you did well. You did right to do this. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, here's a church in Thyatira where they did not do that. Mm -hmm. They just accepted this woman Jezebel, a self-proclaimed prophetess, at her own word, and she then led the people of God astray, the bondservants of God astray, because they tolerated her when they should have tested her, examined her, judged her, and dealt with her. Right. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm. So now, 
It also says in Revelation 16, 7, verse 7, And I heard the altar saying, O yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. So our, our Lord's judgments are true and righteous. We've been given the mind of Christ, have we not? Absolutely. So Jesus can say to us, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. John 7, 24. Mm. So there's the key to this seeming paradox. On the one hand, Jesus saying, judge not, lest you be judged, mm -hmm. is to understand that we are to know where and what God's judgment is, not our own. Right. Okay, this is, That's what's really important. It also demands that we know what we are to judge and what we cannot judge. So let's just take a look at that. We're going to look. I'm going to divide this up into what we what we are not supposed to judge. Okay. And then we'll look at what we are supposed to judge. Okay. We are not to judge outsiders. First mm -hmm. Corinthians five ten. That's exactly what the yes. Apostle Paul said. You you want to read that? Yes. First Corinthians five ten. Read around it a little bit. Can I find it? You should be by the way turning. Your, to your Bibles and finding the same thing. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay. I did not at all mean with immoral people. Of this Sorry, sit a little bit ahead of it. No, I wrote you. When I wrote to you, not didn't. Okay. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not at all mean with immoral people of this world or with the covetous and swindlers or with idolaters, for they then you would have to go out of the world. But actually, I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother, if he is an immoral person or covetous, covetous or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside? God judges. Remove the wicked man from among you. Okay, so now do you think that Paul is contradicting the teaching of Jesus Christ? No. Hardly, hardly. So he's saying, you know, do not judge outsiders. Outsiders, he's talking about unbelievers. But within the church, we're supposed to be judging them. But here's the thing, and tell me that this is not true. In the church today, we spend the vast majority of our time, we are judging the outsiders. Yes. All those dirty, rotten, I mean, put something at the end of it. I mean, homosexuals, people that don't agree with us politically. That, you know, we're always judging the sin of those outsiders. When God specifically says to the Apostle Paul, don't judge them. You are not, don't expect, I say this all the time to, to people that I love. I mean, brothers and sisters, I keep saying to them, don't expect righteous behavior from unrighteous people. Don't judge them. God's going to deal with them. God's going to judge them. That's his job, not ours. We should have no greater expectation that they're going to do what is wrong, that they're going to do what is unrighteous. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, trust me, you couldn't do what was right. How much time did Jesus Christ, in his time here in his ministry on earth, how much time, tell me, did he spend judging the Romans? None. No. But the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers... The ones that were the teachers, he was constantly, you whitewashed tombs, you snakes, you vipers. Is that, is that not right? That's right. <clears throat> so why do we spend so much time judging the world when it says we're not to? And meanwhile, we tolerate every kind of sin within the body of Christ. Because it's easier. It's easier to judge those who are outside rather than to, to deal with what's wrong inside the church. And that's exactly what God says, group all, don't do. Don't judge the outsiders. Homosexuality is a sin. Bada bing, bada boom. It is that clear. So is cowardice. So is greed. Mm. God hates divorce. I mean, I can go through a whole list of things that are going on and have become tolerated within the body of Christ. Like Jezebel. We're tolerating immorality. We, one of the greatest sins in the world, the worldly sin, is to become intolerant. Oh, you've got to be tolerant. Know what? You have to be absolutely intolerant of sin, starting in your own life. We need to become intolerant of sin. 
within our own life and then within the body of Christ. Why do you think Jesus came and his first message was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand? We've got to change. But we start by rep repenting in our own lives. And that requires judging what's going on in our own lives. Judgment starts with the household of God. That's what the word says, okay? So, just, just think about that. I mean, we spend all our time judging the, the, the Muslims. We judge ISIS. We judge the homosexuals. We judge the, the greedy bankers. We judge, but you know what? God says we're not supposed to be judging them. We should be dealing with sin inside the body of Christ. We should become intolerant. Otherwise, God will be speaking to us as he spoke to Thyatira. You tolerated that sin inside the church. Amen. We cannot, okay? We are not, you can't judge eternal salvation or damnation. No, no. Just you can't know. do it. On what basis would you do that? On what basis would you do? Well, what would you look at at a person and say, well, that person's going to hell? You can't. Uh, suppose, well, suppose they were persecuting the church. Well, wait a minute. That's what Saul of Tarsus mm -hmm. did. <laughs> yeah. And the thief on the cross. Oh, the thief on the cross. This man was, was committed crimes that were worthy of death. That's why he was crucified at the same time as Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And yet... When he turned and honored and gave glory to Jesus Christ and recognized him for what he and who he was, Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. You don't know. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you the most gross example I can give you, all right? Okay. Adolf Hitler. Hmm. What are the odds that he went to heaven? Not great. But are you sure? Are you certain that at those last moments in the bunker there in Berlin that he did not, even perhaps as a bullet was flying towards his head, that he did not cry out for salvation to Jesus Christ. And you want to know something? Would he have been beyond? Well, you know, any natural way you look at him, you've got to say he belongs in the pits of hell. But I can't say that. I can't say that's where he is for certain. I can't tell you that Pontius Pilate, who is responsible for finding Jesus Christ innocent of any sin or guilt and sending him to the cross, I can't tell you that he's in hell because of that. You can't judge somebody's eternal salvation because of the, the almighty, the merciful grace, the amazing grace of our God and Savior. You can sit there and say, well, you don't know how horrible. You know what? Did we not go through this in here in the Sermon on the Mount? Mm -hmm. Oh, I never committed adultery. If you looked at somebody with lust, you did. Oh, I never committed a murder. If you looked at them, you were angry. It's, oh, yes. You know what? Get over it. Start to believe the Word of God and live according to the Word of God. Yes, you can recognize that somebody is in sin. That's what Paul was talking about within the body of Christ. Right. Why aren't we dealing with the sin in the church? And there's a plan. I mean, Jesus has a plan for it. Go read Matthew 18. If you see your brother sin, go to him and him alone. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. There's a plan for dealing with it, but it's not. that's not judgment. You know, it, it, I was just thinking about the body itself. When, when there's a sickness in the body, if you don't take care of it and deal with it, it gets worse and then end up having to cut it out. That, that's the truth, and that it can be, it's like gangrene. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, it can be a little thing in a little spot, and it can spread and spread and spread and bring death to the body. That's right. That's what was happening in Thyatira with Je Jezebel, okay? You can't judge based on outward appearance. Now, man, it says, judges by outward appearance. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God searches the heart. We have the mind of Christ. I can't see what's in a person's heart. I can hear what's in a person's heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I can see how people, how people act and live. And if you see your brother, how can Jesus say, if you see your brother sin, are you not judging him when you say that's sin? Are you not, is that not a judgment? No, it's not judgment. It's discernment. It's recognizing what is right and what is wrong. I, you know, I said last week, and I'll probably mention it again today if, or next week. It says in Hebrews, Hebrews 
that the solid food, the meat of the word, mm -hmm. is for the mature, who, because of practice, has his senses trained to discern between good and evil. We're supposed to practice that. We're supposed to be trained. We're supposed to recognize what's right, what's wrong. How do you do that? The Word. Absolutely. That's the measuring The Word. word. You see, this is what it means to judge with a righteous judgment. You can't judge by your own standards. You can't judge by what you see. You can only judge according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Because the Word of God is pure and holy. The Word of God is true. We are to examine all things, but you examine them by the Word. Then it's not your judgment. It's God's judgment, and God's judgment is righteous. In order to do that, you need to know the Word. Abide in the Word. Well, I started this last week talking about the fact that in Matthew 24, when the apostles came to Jesus, and they said, Tell us, what will be the signs of your coming in the end of the age? The first thing he tells them, is to be on their guard against false prophets and false teachers who will come deceiving them right. because many will be led astray. Mm -hmm. The only way, listen to me now, the only way that you can know that you're not being deceived is by abiding in God's Word. Well, the Spirit of Truth was sent into our lives, but the Spirit of Truth was sent in to quicken God's Word in, into our lives. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if, 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 you abide, continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. If you're not abiding in God's word, you want to know something? I don't care how many times you go to church. I don't care how much you tithe on Sunday. I don't care how nice the clothes are you wear to the building you go to. If you're not abiding in God's word, you are going to be deceived by that liar. Amen. So you can't base your judgment, what, you, what you're testing, what you're examining. You know, I say, that I, I, if you've watched these programs, you have heard me say, don't trust me. Mm -hmm. Test me. I go out and I preach and I teach and I tell people this all the time. Don't take my word for anything. Test it against the word of God. That's the standard. It's the only standard. And I usually pray, and if I didn't say it in the beginning today, I pray it in my heart all the time. Father, don't let anything come out of my mouth that you didn't put into my heart. That's right. And that's what you've got to test it on, is does what I say line up with the Word of God? Not whether you like the way I look, not whether you like the way I speak, not whether you like what my background is, not whether you like I'm not young or old or whatever. You base your examination of me, and you should be testing me, examining me, by the Word. By the Word of God. If I don't speak according to the law and the testimony, if I don't speak according to the Word of God, it's because I have no light, no dawn in me. That's what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And you should, not be, you, you should not be spending your time, wasting your time, listening to what I say. But if, I ha if, if, I, if what I'm saying has any value to you, it's because I'm speaking the Word of God. That's right. And there's power. God's Word always accomplishes God's purpose. That's what it says in Isaiah 55. And your spirit knows when it's the Word of God. It does. But we're we're, the problem is we're judging, by the, we're judging the wrong things mm -hmm. with the wrong methods. Right. We're not using the right tools. Are you going to judge somebody by their reputation? Well, in, in a sense, you know, if somebody's got a bad reputation, they, it, it says this is one of the qualifications of being an elder in the church, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. They'd be of good reputation. But even there, you've got to test it. I just mentioned Saul of Tarsus. He was out persecuting the church. The church was terrified of him. With good reason. Yeah. Suppose, suppose, for example, you, you were somebody that you enjoyed as a teacher, and you found out, well, you know, his, the people closest to him say, you better, be, you better watch out. This guy, he's a little off, off, off base. He's a little off his rocker. Would that be a disqualification? No. Why? Because if somebody said it, you have to. Do you know that it says in the Word of God that Jesus' own family said he's lost his senses? That's right. <laughs> if I was the Message Bible, I'd say he's off his rocker. 
<laughs> but I'm not the message wife. No, no. The message thing. No, you know, Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruit. Mm -hmm. What fruit? I'll tell you. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience. Go on and on. It's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's how you can recognize whether somebody is walking according to the Spirit. <sighs> you can't judge by your own standards. Now that is exactly what human nature is all about. We judge everything. You know, I could, uh, we spend a good deal of time in, in Europe and uh, the United Kingdom. We're, we're here now, as a matter of fact. And I could, if you'll forgive me with my broadest sense of humor, tell you, these people over here talk funny. <laughs> they do. They talk. They talk. When I go out, I most often, if I'm teaching around here, I have to start by saying, you, you people are going to have to bear with me and give me a little grace. You see, I don't speak English. I only speak American. I'm learning how to speak English because the vocabulary is different. The pronunciation is different. The phonics is different. Yes. Okay? But don't judge me based on that. Don't judge me based on the fact that you think I talk funny or I think they talk funny. If you're talking and it's not according to the Word of God, you talk ridiculous. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. Don't judge by your own standards. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's taller than me is too tall. Everybody who's shorter than me is too short. Everybody, you know, you judge by your own standards. We cannot judge by our standards. We have to judge according to the Word of God. That's why we have to be retrained in our thinking. But that's why you have to be in the Word of God. You have to know what the Word of God says. Otherwise, you have no standard to judge by. That's right. None whatsoever. Okay. So, <laughs> just to recap. Don't judge the outsiders, okay? Don't judge the world. The world, yes, they're all sinners. It doesn't matter what, what flavor sinner they are. It's sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. Do you believe the Word of God? The person who robs 25 cents out of a, out of a corner grocery store, the wage of that sin is death. The per person who goes out on the street and mass murders 15 people, the wages of that sin is death. Well, that doesn't sound fair to you. You know what? That's because you're not living according to the Word of God. It's not a matter of what's fair to you. It's a matter of what the Word of God proclaims. And the simple truth is the wages of sin is death. But thank God that our God, merciful that he is, has made a way of escape for us. That God the Father loved us so much that he sent his only son Jesus Christ into the world to bear the consequence of our sin on that cross. That's right. But the sin was paid for. The sin was punished. The sin, the consequence of your sin was paid on that cross of Jesus uh, on Calvary. Golgotha, so many years ago. So, what are you supposed to judge? Well, the first thing you've got to judge is it says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, let a man examine himself. Before you go there, okay. talking about judging the outsiders, like, and, that, and you're, you're saying is that you're judging whether or not they're going to hell. Well, you're just even if you're judging the, what their, their behavior is wrong, I mean, of course it is. I mean, you know, but how is an unsaved person lacking the power of the Holy Spirit in his life? Mm -hmm. How is he going to live everything right? Anything right? You know, we go. I I, I don't want to get. You know, of course I'll get distracted. I said I did a teaching here in England just a couple of months ago, and I was talking about the fact that I think that most Christians are not seeing, not walking in, not living in the power of God. Right. And I said the reason is yes. because they're they're going over the speed limit on the M6 or the M60. What would you say? Wait a minute. I don't kill anybody. No, but you, you were speeding on the, on the motorway, weren't you? You were speeding on the interstate, weren't you? Hello in Orlando, Florida. When was the last time you drove through the city, Orlando, on I-4 and did the speed limit? Because it says the Word of God commands, this is not a suggestion, commands that we be submissive to governing authorities. When you are disobedient to that speed limit, you are breaking the law. You have become tolerant of these sins in your life. Mm. 
because everybody's doing it. Do not follow a multitude into doing evil, it says in Deuteronomy. There's no justification for sin. What happens is we start to make excuses for sin. And that's how we can tolerate it. Because there was a good reason for the sin. Mm -hmm. And excuses are, if you haven't heard me say this before, please hear it this time. Excuses are the fiery arrows shot from the pits of hell to kill repentance. As long as you can make an excuse, you'll fail to repent. And as long as you fail to repent, you are living with tolerated sin in your life. Let a man examine himself. If you see sin in your own life and don't feel remorse, you better have a little talk with Jesus. If you find that you have remorse and that doesn't turn into repentance, then you're tolerating it. So actually, you don't think too badly of that sin. We need to change. We are living in the perilous last days. We are living in the last days when, as Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, men will not endure sound doctrine. So what they'll do is they'll accumulate for themselves teachers who will teach according to their own desires, who will tickle their ears. This is what's happening. People, you can fill up a church. You want to, want to build a mega church? I'll give you the secret. Don't preach sin. That's right. Don't talk about sin. Don't confront people with the reality, the horror of sin. Just tell them you can make them feel better about themselves, build self-esteem, that you can help them to be healthier and wealthier. And You know what? We need to be preaching against sin. We need to be like those old prophets of old who came and said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. It says in Lamentations chapter 2, I think it's verse 14, that God held it against the false prophets because they did not expose the iniquity of his people. His people. You know what? We need to expose the iniquity of our own selves. Look in the mirror and examine yourself. Otherwise, don't you dare judge, look at anything with any kind of judgment in your, in your life, right? The purpose of judgment is to cleanse, not to condemn. The purpose of judgment is to cleanse, not to condemn. Hallelujah. I was judged. I was found guilty. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ went to the cross to pay the consequence of my sin. That's what amazing grace is all about. Thank you, Lord. We need to get to the place where we become intolerant of sin, starting in our own lives. And Father, I thank you that you yes. give us discernment so that we do know what is right and what is wrong, Lord God. We know the way we should go, Lord God, because you sent your son Jesus to show us that way. Help us to walk in that way, Lord God, for the glory of your name. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Well, study. Get into the Word. Look at these things. Write to us at office at BibleTalk.com if you have questions about this, and I'll answer them next week. God bless you, and goodbye till then. So